Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, here to tell you to do your research when planning your PC build. And this is actually related to power supplies and the importance of it. Not just the wattage and making sure you've got the right amount of power for your system, but also doing your research and planning it out to make sure you've got the right cables and indeed the power supply will fit into your case in the first place. I had a problem when building the Haven HS420 vGPU in that I realised something while doing it that I thought was important to highlight so that you're aware of it and don't make the same mistakes or at least don't have this problem in the first place. And this is sort of related to the Astral 5090 that I was also testing, although this GPU is not the problem. I'm not going to be talking about melting power cables or indeed the issues with it, the adapters and other things, but instead something that was inspired by it. Because naturally, modern power supply units are designed to help cope with a GPU like this. And you'll know that you need to make sure your cables are inserted fully, whether you're using the adapter or the 12 volt 2x6 power connectors or 12 volt high powers, as they were previously known, the 600 watt power cable that plugs in. You need to make sure that's fully inserted all the way in. So if it's got colored pins on it, you can no longer see that and it's not got pressure on it and things like that. It's not related to that. Instead, it comes about with making sure that you've got a new power supply for your system. So, for example, this MSI Mag A1000GS, which is ATX 3.1 certified and PCIe 5, and will have the right cables to power a 50 series graphics card, or indeed a 40 series. Now, you need to make sure you've got the right wattage for your system as well, and NVIDIA recommends 1000 watts for the 5090, for example. So I'd use a power supply calculator to work out the best for that. But actually what I want to talk to you about is the cabling, the cables included with your power supply, making sure you've got the right ones for your system and everything you're going to be including in your build, because that's where I encountered a problem with this power supply in particular, but it could easily happen with plenty of others. It's not a criticism of this power supply. It's just of the potential setup that you're going to be doing. So if I spill all the cables out on the desk, you'll see there's a few here but not as many as you might think. And if you look at the back of the box, you'll see a list of the included cables, and you can usually get this on the manufacturer's website. This power supply includes two of the 12 volt 2x6 power connectors and the cables to go with them. So the 600 watt power cables, which as you can see, have the yellow connectors on them. And obviously you can make sure that you use this to insert it in place of the adapter. So instead of having to use four eight pin PCIe power cables, you use this. It looks neater and tidier, and you can see when it's fully seated and make sure it's all connected up nicely and hopefully you won't have any problems with it melting. Now, this is interesting because this power supply obviously has two of these cables. I don't really know what instance you're going to be using those in because as far as I'm aware, none of the 50 series require two of them. But this power supply has an issue which is only going to be a problem in certain builds. So there's a lack of power cables. And I noticed this when I laid them out immediately, that it lacks the standard 8-pin PCIe power cables. And indeed, if you look at the power supply, you'll see it has three CPU slash PCIe ports. Now, this motherboard, the Maximus Hero Z890 motherboard, requires one PCIe power connector on the right-hand side, just below the 24-pin power cable. Most normal motherboards require a 24-pin power connector on the right and then two 8-pin EPS slash CPU power connectors on the top left. But this one requires an 8-pin PCIe power cable as well. This is fairly unusual, it is a pretty high-end motherboard, so you won't see it very often, but it does happen. So that means I've obviously using up one PCIe power connector and then the other two ports on that power supply would be filled with the EPS power cables for the CPU at the top left here in the motherboard. That then uses up all of those cables. Now, if you're using something else in your build like Lee and Lee's TL series fans, and I don't mean the wireless ones, I mean the older generation that require the controller that you can see here, that controller also requires a PCIe power connection. So you need six pin power connector for it. You also have the same issue with Corsair's IQ Link setup. Corsair's IQ Link fans are daisy chainable in that you can wire one fan to the next to the next, and then you can connect those cables up to the controller. And that controller requires a PCIe power connector. Perhaps now you can see where I'm going with this, because obviously if you're putting these into your system, you're going to require multiple PCIe power cables. And this is food for thought because you also might need them for your graphics card if you're not using an NVIDIA 50 series or a 40 series GPU. 
So what I've found is that the thought process here is pretty straightforward. Think about what fans you're adding to your system, what PCIe power you're going to need for these things, and how it's going to connect up. In the build that I did, for example, I actually ended up needing two of those controllers from Corsair. So one for the all-in-one cooler and the additional fans. And because of the layout of the case, I ended up having to use a second controller. In theory, we could have got away with one, but I actually ended up having to use two. And obviously that means two PCIe power cables just for these controllers and then an additional one for the motherboard, which means that that power supply from MSI that I showed you would not work with this setup. You couldn't do it. I mean, you can see me using the Lee and Lee Edge power supply here. So it wouldn't be possible with the MSI power supply just to do this in this system. So it's important to plan this sort of thing out and it could happen with other power supplies. So just look at the manufacturer's website, check what cables are included with it. Think about what cables you're gonna need in your system do your planning beforehand. Hopefully, perhaps watch a few Provoke Prawn videos and get some background on what you're going to need, how you're going to set it up and how it's going to work. Hopefully this has been some helpful and logical insights that will get you thinking. Check out the review on the case that I've done recently and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks very much for watching.